Well, after 20 solid years of use, our uh, heat pump system here in the RV is a dual compressor, big old unit, draws tons of power. Well, it finally bit the dust. And, you know, it had been limping along for a while. I think one of the compressors had gone bad and we're just running on one, but it was working and I knew eventually it was gonna <laughs> give up the ghost. But what I wanna do to replace it is not to put in one just like it and I don't want to uh, necessarily spend the money to repair it. I wanna try to come up with something different that really suits us, which is, you know, dry camping. And while we could run this on our system with one compressor, it was a real power hog. What I want to try to do now is put in a system that, first of all, can adequately cool our large motorhome and, and maintain it uh, for a long period of time. But also, I don't want it to uh, draw any more than say a thousand watts you know because we have plenty of solar but a thousand watts is a good number that i can sustain and you know finally i want everything to be able to fit nicely in this area in here in the basement i really like the idea of having a basement unit and the roof is already full so uh, roof mounted acs are not an option at this point so yeah, I may have to retrofit some things to make things work and fit in here. Oh, did I mention I want it to run on 12 volt, not uh, 120 or 240 volt AC. Is it all doable? Well, I'm not sure, but uh, we're about to find out. This isn't going to be a small project by any means, but I'm going to have to remove this whole thing first and take a look around and come up with a good plan. Not again. All right, now the first thing that I wanna do before I completely uh, remove the, uh, the heat pump is to test the airflow coming out of the ducts. Now, this is gonna come into play later uh, when I try to find and uh, size up a blower that's gonna be able to uh, move air around. I know it's not gonna be as strong because the blower in this thing is pretty huge and uh, you know, trying to find a 12 volt uh, system that has a big enough blower is gonna be challenging. What I want to do first is just kind of turn on the fan, even though the AC doesn't work. And then using this uh, gauge, I can just get a general idea of how much uh, airflow I've got, you know, with the, uh, the old system. So I turn on the fan, just have it on low. You can probably hear it kick on here in a sec. There it is. Now, the reason I'm picking this vent up here, I just know that it has usually the most airflow. So I just close all the other vents and I'm just going to measure it from this one. Now it'll be a baseline that I use to uh, measure against an alternative uh, replacement system. So let's go ahead and measure this. Feels good actually. <laughs> so this is uh, putting out probably a maximum of about 2,300 uh, feet per minute, I think is the reading on that. And you know, all the way down to say 2,000 feet per minute. So I'm gonna kind of use that about the 2,000 mark as, uh, as just kind of my baseline, just so I have an idea. I don't think the, the new unit that uh, I'll probably put in is gonna put out that much, but at least we'll know. All right, now my uh, system runs off of two 120 volt AC circuits, one for each compressor. So this is the primary one, I'm gonna shut that off. And this is the secondary one, I'm gonna shut that off. So those are two separate 20 amp breakers. And that should totally uh, disconnect power from the AC unit in the back. When we're out, normally I don't use the second one anyway. And this is a good point to make at this time because I don't think I need both of these 13.5K BTU compressors to adequately cool our motorhome. So anyway, just food for thought. Turn these suckers off. Now 
we still have uh, 12 volts coming from the thermostat controls here, which is this gray cord. So you can see there's this uh, blinking light, basically a little status light. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the thermostat control out. That should do it. So now everything on the uh, on the thermostat control is right here. All right now here you can see uh, we've got our capacitors. So this is the run capacitor for the first compressor, second one, and these two black ones here with a little relay on top are the uh, I believe they're the starter capacitors. So I've tested all those when I was troubleshooting this, and they're all. Uh, seem to be measuring out pretty good. So I've already uh, checked the voltage, make sure there's nothing that's hot here. Uh, because down here we have our two AC circuits coming in. This is the number one circuit and the number two circuit. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove these. And then there's also a ground on either side. I'll go ahead and remove that as well. All right. So there's the first primary circuit, and then we got the second one here. It's hot, neutral, ground. Not sure what I'm going to do with these circuits at this point. You know, I could reuse them at some point if I needed to, but right now I'm just going to disconnect them. Okay, so we've got number two circuit and number one circuit. We're going to want to remove these uh, these little conduit connectors here, and uh, it'll allow us to take these out of the of the air conditioner. Okay, that should do it for the conduit. Now the cable's going in, now we can uh, unbolt some things. All right, we have our ducting that's going out of the unit here. Uh, we gotta remove some screws. There's two or three of them, four of them here, and same on the other side. And they're very dirty right now. Last one. There it is. Should be able to just take the, uh, the little bracket here holding the duct on. Should be able to. Yeah, there it comes. Should be able to remove it. There it is. Coming up on cables and stuff. There you go. There it is. Holds this guy on. The, now the duct is free. Yay. There is a bracket here at the top. And one at the bottom. And I'm wondering if I can just remove these and then pull the unit out as opposed to dropping the whole thing with the bracket. We're going to give it a try. Come on, screw. Self tapper, so get a little stuck in there. There we go. All right, it does move. Let's see if we can move this thing. All right, well, something is uh, catching in here. I can move it, but there's something in there. So what I'm gonna do is just loosen these two three-quarter inch 
bolts. They're pretty long, so I can drop them maybe an inch or so, and they might give me enough clearance to uh, free up whatever's holding this thing back. Not dirty. Here it comes. Where did this big rock come from? I think it came from Alaska. <laughs> All right. See if that made a difference. I don't see anything up here. Oh, there it comes. Okay. All right. It's freed up. Now, I think what I'm going to do is here is back up the, my truck bed to this spot and then should be able to just kind of finagle it into the back of the truck. That's the plan. All right, let's see if we can make this happen. Oops. Okay, second attempt. again. Okay, we got it. Stupid door. All right, well that big old unit is gone and uh, we can kind of see what we're working with here. Now I spent a little bit of time just hosing this area down, getting it cleaned up, also getting myself cleaned up. And uh, so we have kind of a blank canvas here to work from. But we can see that here's the uh, intake, this big old area. This is where it was sucking in air from the inside of the coach. And there's some filters up here. And then this is under our bed actually. And then it was using that air to cool and blow it out through this duct here. And this duct system goes all the way through the ceiling of the motorhome. And it's a pretty long duct system. So that's a, an area of concern here. So we also still have this nice big, uh, big base here that we can build something on top of and you know, fabricate something to fit here and, you know, close in, you know, whatever we put here. Now the power cables from the, uh, the old unit are here. There's, you know, they're still sitting here. I'm going to have to uh, clean this stuff up a little bit, probably pull them through this bulkhead and put them in a, a box inside here where I can just kind of terminate them and label them in case I want to use them later. Cause it's a nice, uh, they're both like 20 amp, AC circuits, 120 volt AC circuits. So might be useful <laughs> somewhere down the road. So, I mean, if you have any ideas for what I could use for these two circuits, you know, back here in the rear of the coach, let me know, you know, drop a comment. But there's also this uh, gray uh, thermostat control cable that goes all the way up to the control panel. So I'll just kind of tidy all this up and just kind of tuck it away back here nicely. So for the, the new system, I have a couple of different options. You know, I, I definitely want to bring in air from inside so it's recirculating the air from inside the RV and slowly, you know, 
bringing in colder air and making even colder air instead of pulling it in from outside. So I, I need to be able to pull that from inside. So I'm gonna be pulling in air from this area here and I wanna be able to push it through the existing ductwork out here because it's already there. Um, but I do have another option which is to push it through the heating ducts which are in the floor. So I have a whole set of ducts that kind of runs through the center of the floor of the, uh, of the coach. And there's like four registers that, uh, it's a pretty straight shot, straight through the middle. So that's a shorter path. I could just uh, poke a hole through this, um, this little wall metal, sheet metal wall back here. And the, uh, the heating ducts are actually right behind there. So that's option two, B, <laughs> whatever. So that's another option if, if for some reason, you know, the ducting is just too long going through the ceiling. But I wanna be able to try to make that work if possible. Now I still need to run power back here to this area to power the 12 volt air conditioner. Now I got AC power here obviously, but I'm not going to use it. So I need to pull in some uh, 12 volt power from the battery system and it's about 10, 15 feet away here. So I'm not sure yet. I'll do some calculations to figure out if I'm going to go with a four gauge cable. Uh, or maybe a number two cable and pull the positive and negative back here. Probably just the positive actually. I could probably bring the negative from the chassis. Now before pulling the trigger on you know which size system to get for this whole setup for my rig, I needed to uh, be able to know for certain or be able to test you know what kind of airflow I'm going to be able to get if I try to push uh, air through this duct. So there's a, a couple different options for blower sizes and you know number of compressors but uh, you know how do you really know unless you actually try it. So I worked with the supplier and uh, I was able to get a, a test blower so I could hook it up here and you know one of the blowers on the units that uh, I might use and uh, actually hook it up and see how much airflow I get through my system. So I'll show you what a uh, what I got, I kind of retrofitted some kind of a flange to go on here and then I'll set it here and we'll give it a test. The blower, all right. Let's stick that up in here. All right. So yeah, I kind of made this so that it fits over here and what I'll do, I think I have, yeah. Just gonna clamp it on for now. Should give it a adequate seal. Same on the other side. Okay. I think it's sealed up pretty good. All right, so I have a, uh, speed controller here and we got 12 volt hooked up to the fan or blower it works uh, pretty good I tested it in the shop and it was blowing pretty good let's go ahead and fire it up turn on the power here okay got a pretty good seal Right now, if you're curious how many amps uh, this 12 volt blower is pulling at 100%, let's hook up a clamp meter real quick and I can show you. Yeah, it's pulling 8 amps at 12 volts, so not too bad, pretty efficient. So I can dial it down if I wanted to to simulate like 80%. Well, let's go ahead and just keep it at 100 for now, see what happens. should be blowing nicely on the inside. Let's go measure it. You know, I went ahead and closed all the other uh, vents and the, all the other registers in the ceiling so that we're just getting this one, which is usually the, the strongest one, like I measured last time. And you know, with the other big blower in the heat pump, it was well over 2,000 uh, feet per minute. I think it was the, the unit of measure, but um, yeah, it's, it's blown pretty good, but that's only just with this one register open. So let's go ahead and measure it, see what we got. All right. 
Yeah, so about 1100, so it's about half of what it was with the old system. Let's see what it drops down to when I open another uh, <laughs> another register. Let's open this one here. Okay, now what do we got? All right, it dropped down to about a thousand. All right, let's open up one here in the front and see where we're sitting at. So this one's pulling in about 787 feet per minute. And so we got three registers open now, one in the middle, one in the front, one in the back, and uh, they all kind of drop down between 780 down to 700 or so for the back one. Just depends on where in the ducting system they end up. All right, that was a pretty good test. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out, but I think I have what I need now to get a hold of the supplier, kind of put together a system that is going to work for giving me enough airflow through this duct and, you know, be able to cool down the rigs. Now, in the meantime, I'll probably be just kind of cleaning up this area, do a little bit of rust control, and uh, yeah, maybe even rerouting a few things now that I can get back to this space. I've never been able to access it from this side because of this giant AC that's in the way, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get on that and I'll circle back around uh, when I got something to show you